so we're here at La Vida Volta, the car show in Denver, Colorado, here by Red Rocks Amphitheater. It's been awesome to see all the vehicles that we have, but one of my personal favorites has been this FJ80 Land Cruiser. And here's the, the creator. Let's, can you tell, tell him your name and why you even decided to convert a Land Cruiser to electric? So I'm Jimmy Underhill, and I've decided to use a Land Cruiser because I wanted to go off-road driving in the mountains here in Colorado and uh, experience that nature w wilderness without the gasoline smells and the noise and I just try something different and new. Um, I have fast cars, so I wanted to, to do something different from what you might otherwise see. This isn't your first electric car? Uh, no, I've used to own a Nissan Leaf and I own a couple uh, 1970s Electrex, which are fiberglass. Is this, is this one here? Yes, so this is my Electrex. show it here. It's a funky looking, <laughs> I love it. So tell me more, so what did you use to convert this? So I used parts from a Nissan Leaf, the battery, the motor, the chargers, uh, the inverter, everything from a Nissan Leaf. And then I used our Resolve EV VCU controller, which controls all that stuff. So that's the new, the new brains of the, of the car. Exactly. Okay, cool. So the Nissan Leaf motor, it's only a 100 pound motor. It's like this big, right? Yeah, it's about 12 inches cube. And it pushes this giant car. Yeah, it does. It's, it makes it 100 horsepower, about 200 foot pounds of torque and with enough gear reduction, it's got enough oomph to move it down the road, no problem. As good as the original or better? Uh, the jury's still out. I think that it's at least as good. Uh, it's definitely not a slow vehicle. Um, these They were they slow were, to begin with, yeah, I mean. <laughs> when they were new, they were like underpowered, so it's still underpowered, but it's about the same. I know there's a lot of Land Cruiser people that would be terrified to see that you tore out that motor, but I, I think they'd be, uh, impressed if they rode in it. I mean, yeah, be... I think if they drove it, they would really like it. The control you have under your foot with the throttle, um, the really low reduction gearing, and you're able to just creep along at you know a snail's pace, just like you want to do. So is that uh, helpful in your rock crawling? Yeah, definitely. There's one issue which I noticed is you have no audio uh, feedback. So you have no engine noise, so you don't know how much torque you're applying per se, because you can't hear the motor revving up. Mm -hmm. So there was a couple times when I gave it too much throttle and it spun the tires because it was just too much, but you have no audio feedback to, to know. Hmm. Well, and so, so you lifted it, you put a locker in it, put a winch on it. You can still run the winch because you have a, a oh, yeah. 12 volt battery system still. Yeah, better than an alternator, the DC to DC converter from the Leaf will run that thing all day long. Nice, so it's got how many miles on the body? Uh, 325,000. Oh. Classic Land Cruiser, how many more miles do you think you're gonna put on the body? Oh, as many as I can. Uh, it's gonna be measured in the hundreds right now, but uh, you know, I wanna take it, I wanna wheel it here in Colorado. I wanna take it back to Moab. I wanna go do the Rubicon in California. I just wanna drive it as much as I can. Tell us about some of the events you've been to with it and the reaction people gave you. So I, I went to Cruise Moab earlier this year. It was the 25th anniversary of the event, and this was the first electric truck to participate, which is like, pretty cool and everybody there loved it. Everybody thought it was really awesome and I didn't ha even have a single shred of negative feedback about it. Wow. Cool, well I don't think you're the first electric Land Cruiser. I think Electric GT had some FJ40 and stuff but you are and, one uh, of the coolest. You might be the first FJ80. I don't think I've seen any of those. So possibly. That's... There is a company in South Africa and Australia and they make electric Land Cruisers for mining operations. Oh wow. And they are 70 series Land Cruisers and those oh. are those are really cool. <laughs> that but, would be cool. Yeah. Well, nice. Well, is there anything else you want to know about? So, uh, uh, power steering. When you're rock crawling, you need some power steering with the big tires. What did you do? Yeah, so I used a Volvo hydraulic pump. It's an electric pump that runs off the 12 volt system and it provides hydraulic pressure to run the power steering just like stock. Okay. And for the brakes, it's a GM brake vacuum pump that provides a vacuum source for the brakes just like the factory. Okay, right, cool. Can we show that? Let's look at those. So uh, where's the where's our pump? So this here's our power steering pump, and it's got the reservoir built in. It's really kind of a cool unit. And then that silver can in the corner is our vacuum pump. All right, and that works just as good as original. Better actually. Better than original. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Cool. Well, I love it. Great job. So what did it? How did it? How did you feel the first time you got in and stepped on the pedal, and it, it, and it was working? It was a really <laughs> weird sensation it was dead silent I didn't have any of the pumps hooked up yet so it was literally dead silent and it just kind of creeped forward and it just made me giggle I you couldn't laugh. even handle it <laughs> yeah it was too cool well awesome I'm excited to see what you do with it in the future you haven't having any problems with it 
Uh, I have a little vibration, well, a big vibration that I'm trying to solve now. So I actually have dropped out the drivetrain right now and I'm re-engineering that. Uh, right now, the top speed is about 50 miles an hour, but after my upgrades, I plan it should go about 75 miles an hour. It wow. should go just as fast as you can go. Wow, so did you keep the transmission? Uh, I ditched the transmission, but I kept the transfer case. Cool. So I've got the high and low range four by four, but the motor just goes directly into the transfer case from uh, through a reduction unit and there's no transmission at all. Cool, what's the reduction unit? What's, do you know the brand or? It's called a black box from Northwest Fab. Oh, cool. And it's an off the shelf reduction for rock crawlers like this. Well, gasoline ones, not yeah. electric ones. Oh, cool. <laughs> but I made it work. That's so. awesome. So you're you're having some vibration from the adapter. Thing. Yeah, exactly. Okay. It's just not perfectly lined up. Because you use the uh, flexible a, a U-joint type exactly. of setup. Yeah, and right. it was just not a good idea. So what are you gonna do to fix it? It'll just be a solidly mounted, uh, really rigid structure with a solid drive shaft, no joints at all, and it'll be um, precision machine, so it's all perfectly aligned. Great, was it hard to uh, mount the motor and everything? It was uh, definitely a challenge, but it kind of all pieced together. I just did one little section at a time, and it kind of, the end result fit together like the battery fit under the hood with less than an inch to spare <laughs> and the motor has about less than an inch clearance to the battery and everything just kind of fits so this is cool. a, the leaf motor too uh this is the battery pack here in the, from in the a, middle from, from a from nissan a, leaf from a nissan leaf and the leaf charger and the leaf inverter yep and i've got a chatamo fast charger so i can do wow. dc fast charging so you can pull right up to the plug and yeah just charge. like on the nissan leaf it's and on the front the, all the ev guys first impressions would be that you're hogging the, the spot, right? And then they see that you're plugged in. Exactly, <laughs> but it's, uh, legally it's an EV now in Colorado, so I'm allowed nice. to use those chargers. That's awesome. Was it hard to register with that? It's actually not. There's a process where you take it to get uh, inspected at a uh, Colorado DMV location, and they basically look through the vehicle and make sure all of the gasoline components are gone. No fuel tank, no engine, no fuel lines. And then they change your title, your VIN from being a gas car to an EV and you no longer need to do the emissions testing wow. and you just pay registration and they that's increase awesome. your registration a fee a little oh. bit to <laughs> get you, gas so you don't pay gas taxes. Darn so. government. All right. <laughs> well, still cool. That's so awesome. Cool. Let's, can, you, can we look around it a little bit? Yeah, let's, uh, let's do it. So tell us some of the other upgrades you did. You. So I got a Gamma VD roof rack. It's uh, full of solar panels and those provide about 400 watts of power to the 12 volt system of the truck. So when I'm driving, those help to offset some of the electric pumps that are just constantly running all the time. And then when it's parked, I have them charging a smaller battery in the back of the vehicle, which is like a, a little portable battery that I can charge the main battery from uh, for about 10%. So if I get in a pinch, I got a 10% reserve. So from the solar? Yeah. <laughs> so so when, when you, people see solar on the top, they, they think, wow, does your whole car charge on solar? Um, it could, but it would take probably two or three weeks. It would take a very long time. <laughs> because you only have that much space. Yeah. Well, you'd need a whole trailer of panels to charge the car, right? Yeah, uh, but it, maybe in the future that'd be something if uh, new technology comes out or if I could make some sort of ground array that I could set up you know, when I was out camping or something like that, maybe that's an option. So it's just an experiment. I want to see how it works. Well, very cool. I love it. Thank you, man. Yeah, thank you.